Hello and welcome to Art with Alex. I'm Alex Gardega and this is my good buddy Chris Bentley right here. Good man. Um, this is my first, I don't want to call it interview. What is it, Chris? A rap session? <laughs> discussion. Musical discussion. discussion. Yes, that's what it is. Um, <laughs> we're going to make stuff up. So Chris, you're going to play a little bit of a song and then we're going to start, right? Definitely. I'm uh, honored to be here with Al. He's a... Uh, Longtime friend, great artist, and I, I love the fact that he's always trying to branch out in different directions. And uh, this is all his uh, idea to uh, begin a discussion about music and uh, our relevant, our relative passions uh, in different arts. But uh, it's the first song. Um, it's off of my album uh, called Grand Design. It's a song called Even If. That's one of the latter ones in the album, but I really like playing it acoustically. about this just enjoying uh, the time and the moments uh, friends uh, family and what have you so uh, and, and you know we don't know where we're all ending up and going but we uh, if we enjoy the ride it's go it's all good so that's what the song's about and I'm psyched to be here with Al right now uh, sort of sharing the, the day and the adventure so uh, thanks for having me Chris this is um, Chris has a new album out called Grand Design and this is, what's, what's the name of the song again? Even If. Even If. And this is one of the songs on the on the, it's on the, uh, it's on the album. It's uh, song uh, number nine. How many songs total? Ten. Ten songs? Okay. And how long did you work on the album for? The uh, album took me pretty much a year to put together. Uh, I, I was, um, I put all the music in the, uh, all the instrumentation and all of the vocals down myself. I had a friend of mine, uh, Rick Corwin, play the drums and, uh, a wonderful singer friend uh, Gina Donadio do the uh, backing vocals, but I, I so I had to, I put the the core of the album together. So it took a, it took a, about a year to put it all together, uh, all these ten songs, and to get the arrangements correct and uh, to get it to feel and sound right. And um, now Grand Design, I um, I got involved in this because Chris asked me to do the album cover, um, and when he mentioned it was Grand Design, I had a um, I have tons of just things I file away always on my computer images and stuff like that. And um, I found this amazing, amazing clock. It's an astronomical clock from Prague. It's one of the coolest things I've ever seen. I'll post it on this video. And um, that's the first thing that came to mind because it's such a cool, intricate image. And uh, uh, that was the jumping off point for the album cover was that clock, which is really amazing. It's got a... Well, I knew uh, I knew Al was the right man for the job because uh, many many years ago uh, I won't say how many but uh, I, um, I I went into his art studio in New York City and he was um, at that time very into uh, making uh, glass works and the designs and the grandeur of his uh, glass works were I, I just was it was so awe inspiring and blew me away and and I, you know I've known Al forever I've seen tons of his paintings but. In terms of grand and design, uh, I couldn't think of a better person because, I mean, if you see him, he posts so many, uh, you know, little pictures and images and scratches and this and that. He's got so much going on in, inside of him all the time. And and uh, when he came up with that clock idea, I was I fell in love with that instantly. It was a, a fantastic idea. So uh, I knew he was the right man for the job, and he came through in a huge way. And I, I'm, I'm really thankful. I mean... People to this day are just saying that the album cover is amazing, and I, I almost can't wait to make like an LP, you know, well, so to have it a little bit bigger. I just did the basic, you know, uh, some of the basics with putting the image together, but then somebody kind of um, yeah, Gina, took it from there. Was yeah, a Gina family member or something? No, or it's Gina Donadio, the girl who uh, sang with me on this oh, album. Really? Yeah, yeah, she did a nice job. You know, I, I, uh, I'm not a real computer whiz, so I, uh, 
you know, I, she, I think she did a good job in where yeah, she no, took it. You know. it was like it was uh, works. Everything, the way we put everything together, really was fantastic. So, and Chris is one of the few people's allowed to call me Al because if you have to know me a certain amount of time, and I became Alex after a certain point. But I've known Chris since seventh grade or something. Yeah, like I, I, I slip <laughs> in these formal settings. I still say Al. No, so you know, I, no, I, I apologize. To, uh, just yeah. those people out there aren't. Now, Chris, let I'll me say ask Alex you, from now on. Just no, to, let me ask you a question, Chris. Um. You've been playing music for uh, since I knew you, basically, right? Oh, um, yeah. High, high since school, uh, right? like 13, 14 years old. Um, now, when I was in high school, I don't actually know what grade we met in. I, I, we went to Cold Spring Harbor High School in Long Island, and um, I was kind of miserable there. I didn't like it. I was kind of the art outcast figure a bit. And, uh, um. I didn't have a lot of money. It was just a weird school to, to go to in that sense. But there were some really cool people, and Chris was Chris was always like that. Um, like, like there was a lot of kind of snobby kids and jocks that I didn't get along with. Too, but Chris was always a really nice guy. And uh, then I became, I think, did I meet you through For Tim Timmy, Barnes? Timmy Barnes, yeah. I, became, I was on the literary magazine in my high school, and I was good friends with a guy named... Tim Barnes, who was also in the Leary Magazine, we became good friends. And I, we actually wound up becoming roommates after, I guess, after high school. Yeah, obviously, after high school, became after roommates. After college. Well, I think he was touring. Wasn't you? Weren't you guys we touring? Because yeah. he was gone all the time. So we were in our early, like, mid, like early 20s, like 22, 23, 24. Jesus, that's a long time ago, yeah. yeah. Um, and your band was in high school was the Barley Boys. Yep. And let me see if I remember who was in it. It was you, Tim Barnes, Mike Whalen. No, uh, Larry Rustieri. Larry Rustieri and Scott Whalen. Scott Whalen. Whalen. Yeah. Whalen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There was another Whalen. There was in a high Sean school. Whalen in our, yeah, in our yeah. high school. <laughs> okay. Now, and wasn't Larry Rustieri bass? I was the bass. You were bass. No, I remember you. Larry bass. was guitar. Scott sang, and Timmy was the drums. Scott. Now, do you keep in touch with any of the guys? The, oh, yeah. the Barley we're, uh, we're actually thinking about. The, Doing a little show uh, coming up. Uh, it was really low key, uh, but we, we we get together just about every year this time. Oh really? Try to play somewhere. Last year we played um, at Finley's in Huntington, so we'll do like a reunion show. So we're, we're trying to just keep it uh, keep it going. We've, we've we've even talked about you know you know other other ways to try to promote. We love coming back to uh, the Huntington area. That's where we started, and that's where I, I really started performing and playing. So I love coming back and uh, just being in that area. It's, it's definitely it's nice to be back in the hometown. I remember you guys had a uh, like a black van with the big logo on the side of the barley. Yeah, Tim I never paint, liked Tim, that logo, by the way, but I was never one to Tim, tell you. Tim that. painted that on the side himself. It was pretty great. It, yeah, we so we had that thing. Uh, yeah, it was a sad day when we had to sell that and uh, when we disbanded. But it was. How long were you a band for? How long was the barley? Were the barley? It was probably barley almost in the vicinity of seven or eight years. Really? Yeah. And um, what year did you guys form in high school? Like what? We were what, in like what, our what, junior year. Really? That late? I thought it was late. Right. Yeah. No, we had all been in different bands, but we decided to come together. To play, so uh, so it's been music's been a big part of my life for you know since I knew those guys. And Larry, Larry and I were, Larry and I have been in just about every band do together. You want to take that or you, no? Yeah. Cool, I'm okay. happy. Um, and now you did, didn't you go to Harvard or something? I did. That's pretty impressive, man. That's pretty impressive. So now I didn't didn't Larry go to Harvard? Larry and I, I'm supposed to say Larry and I have been lifelong friends. So you both went to Harvard. We were roommates in college too. Were you really? Yeah. So what the hell was it like? Did, where did you apply? Did you apply? Were you, was your Harvard your main goal? Obviously, yeah, no, but, uh, it you know, wasn't your fallback school. Obviously. No, no, no. But you know, like um, you know, back in in our era, we we you know, for me, I, I had an athletic uh, background, so that yeah. was a big thing for me. If I was going purely academic, I don't think I would have gotten in. But uh, did you play the cross? Play the cross. Really? Yeah, so, yeah, I remember so. you were a good uh, defenseman, right? Yeah, I was a defenseman. Yeah. So basically, playing all that and being involved with the sport enabled me to get to to that point and to be there and all that. But um, and and then once we got out of school, we decided to go, you know, full time with the band. And so that's really where you know I learned how to, um, you know, sort of create instrumentations and and, and dynamics and What's recording. So we. We pretty much at that time were probably one of the first bands to make a CD. I mean, we put. Together, I remember that. I remember. So that was right. um, very much yeah. at the beginning stages of when CDs were being made. So. Now, was it was it tough? Like I don't know, a tough call, or, or even with the parents, et cetera, Like coming out of Harvard, you know, serious, obviously a serious, serious school, and then deciding, all right, I'm going to go right into music. Did was that a? I'm sure it was a tough decision. And yeah, you know, I don't, I don't you know, know the, where the, your parents the, and all stood. The thing that. 
I, my, my path has been like that the whole time. I'm even up against it right now with the family and stuff. And the me, yeah. I still have, I can't uh, shake the desire to play music and write music and play music. Uh, obviously, coming out of school was a huge issue. Coming, uh, you know, coming from where we came from to wanting to play music, but on a lot of levels, um, it sort of speaks to the passion and also that tension. I mean, I have that tension now. I think a lot of that's just been what I've been able to create this album with. Um, you know, so it's like I've never had a straight, clean path right. to yeah. get involved in what I really love doing, and that's making music and playing music. So I'm, I'm up against that current always. So, um, but it's part. You know, like you, you have all, you have certain challenges, and you have certain. You have things that are always there to kind of give you what would be I call attention. Like you have, and so I'm, you you have it, I have it. You know, we, that's what you know. What I think drives us. You know, I don't yeah. know. You I know, mean, if you could speak to that yourself. I mean, well, I you know I went to art school and um, I dropped out of art school, but there was no. I mean, my all my dad said was don't cut your ear off. You know, what I mean? yeah. it's like what you're dropping out of art school to go make art. You know, so. Uh, but. Uh, I'm just talking about the way you you have like this inner drive or something that's in you that you but you maybe you know, maybe you not finishing school maybe you having this fam familiar I'll, pressures I'll, that kind you of know, stuff if it's if always you, that edge there's something there that's driving you you know as you get older in life you tend to psychoanalyze yourself a bit and get more reflective on stuff especially as you get towards certain ages and and I realize that like when I was in high school I didn't really feel like I fit in. It was a money thing and this and that. You know, luckily I joined wrestling and I became a little bit tough and so I didn't have any problem getting picked on, you know. But I um, I definitely felt inferior because I didn't have the right clothes and have cars and any of that stuff. And I think that at that age it kind of sticks with you a bit. So in a way it was kind of a driving factor for me to prove myself and it worked in a bit of a sense in that I've always been very driven. But the question is, if you're driven to compensate for something in a sense, right? Is that a real pure motive to create? It's, I'm not saying that's my prime mover or my soulmate motivating force, but like, I just well, remember as a kid, like, I'll show these mother, you know, yeah. efforts like, uh, <laughs> uh, but it's funny, like certain things in your life that happen maybe when you're young can still drive you and motivate you. And, as you're older, which almost can seem like you're an eternal child in a sense, if that you know. I know people are 50 years old and still pissed at their parents who maybe aren't even alive anymore, you know. And it, it seems like you're, uh, you have the potential to be in a, a, a driven by forces from events that shaped you when you were young, you know. Well, the thing that I would have to say though, in terms of the way in which you've evolved and like I've evolved, you know, we we're still staying with it. Um, yeah. You know, you I think bring a lot of that. Uh, whatever that fire is, I mean, there's there's no question. There's an innate ability, so that whatever's there is like it's it's only magnifying what is completely an amazing talent for you. Uh, you know, me, I'm 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 not like great at anything, but I love making music and I love putting songs together. It's not like I'm a not like I'm a Billy Joel where I sit down and I'm an aficionado on the piano and I can just blow everyone away on that. I mean, to me, it's like I'm a pretty simple player everywhere, and I kind of put all that simplicity into what this album is, and I. I have many more I want to do, like just as you have many more paintings you want to do. You know, it's just like it's just it's something that's there. Let me ask you this: the album took a year to make. Then, um, how long before you even started pen to paper, were you saying I want to put a um, put together and finish an album? It was a big feat. I, I know yeah. friends of mine who are musicians who they're they're my age and they still never set never made. I think that's insanity. Like. I've probably made 10,000 pieces of art and paintings just because I have to. I'll be in a mental home if I don't. But here's the question is, I know people who are lifelong musicians but still haven't completed an album, you know? And I don't understand that, like, that concept. Is it a fear factor or what is it? I mean, like, I would have to have albums out there, and I think it's great that you did it. How long did it take, my, my original question, how long did it take you... From start to finish, start to, like, so like I'm gonna like make when an the album. First, first song came. Yeah. See the thing. The thing that happened for me was these started to come together, and like you know, you you know when you write your sketches, you know you're sitting there drawing. So I had this whole book. It was just all of a sudden like another idea would come, and I'd have another song, another right. idea would come. So all of a sudden I'm sitting there on on a batch of music that came to me all within say like three to four months. You know, so it came at a similar time. But don't you notice that once you make the commitment in your head to make an album is when this then once you commit. I think it was Gota, Goth, whatever, however you pronounce his name, uh, said, if you commit to something, then the universe 
moves with the improvidence or something along those lines. Like once you commit to something yeah. visually, artistically, almost with a deadline, I think deadlines are very important, even the ones you make in your head. Didn't you notice uh, once you do that, then stuff starts to flow a little bit? But if you're just, if you don't create a deadline or a goal, you'll just it won't happen. wallow around. Yeah, I don't mean wallow is the right word, but you'll just flop around forever noodling stuff. Yeah. I call it noodling, you're, where you won't get anything done without a deadline. No, uh, you're totally right. And truthfully, um, I have had other episodes of this. I have literally two other albums that I bypassed that I recorded, I wrote, I, I, I put all the instruments down, I even played the drums on them, and I have them on a computer, but I just, I left them. And then this one came, and I liked a lot more of what I had, and then I was able, I pulled Breezy from a, a, a older album, that was one of my, right. one of my longer, longer songs on this record, but, uh, and that's a, a song, it's, it's an upfront song, but bottom line was that I said to myself, I'm not gonna live another day and, and have another batch of music sitting in a computer bed that isn't going to come out and i decided that that it was similar it, it actually it corresponded to like uh i gave a eulogy for it. my aunt passed away and um I, just talking about her life i was like you know what i'm not going to live another day not doing something that i love to do i just yeah. can't i can't be away from it anymore i've got to be a part of it uh, my aunt lived the life very passionately she took care of a lot of people she was in a, a nursing home administrator she she facilitated the, de the deaths of I don't even know how many people and made their lives comfortable at the end. And, I, and when I started speaking about that, I was like, man, I'm not, I, I want to I bring life to you know, people through my music to the best of my ability. I, I, that's, I feel like it's what I have to give. And so I decided that I was going to do it. Well, you know, I look, at, I look at art in two different ways. I completely respect people, A, who just, like I call them Sunday painters. There are people I know who just paint on like Sundays when they can for this pure love of painting, right? And I used to, when I was younger, I used to look, oh, you're not committed, blah, blah, blah. I used to look down. But now I look at people like who create on Sundays. I don't, I'm not saying you. I'm saying this is other visual artists. And now I look at them as like, well, they're creating out of pure joy of painting. And I find when you really get wrapped up and make, kind of make it your life or something, there is the risk where you can lose, even though I love art and I love painting. It's, it, it, it can happen where you get a little jaded on, on things and lose a little bit of that initial love of pure creation when you have so much wrapped up. Because I'll see somebody, you know, I'll be in like Central Park and I'll just see somebody, even though I do go out and do watercolors and stuff, I'll see somebody sitting there and just painting a nice watercolor of some this and that and i still do that but like i'm usually too rushed i'll like take a photo and do it in my studio or but and i know that person probably doesn't sell they do it just because they completely enjoy it and that's its own kind of like beauty does do you follow what i'm saying where people who do yeah, things no. just for the complete love of doing it and i find myself i'm always in such a rush to go back to my studio to get this painting done this deadline done this and that that like i get a little envious sometimes when i say well that person has a real job, they don't have a gun to their head, either make a painting or you're gonna starve to death. And when you put every, all your eggs in one kind of creative artistic basket in a sense, it can, there's that other side that comes with it, which is the, um, uh, you know, the, the A possibility of losing the very pure love of what you initially got you in there, you know? Um, so I kind of look at art is both ways. I used to, when I was younger and kind of angry, I used to say, you're either all in or you're out. So I would just laugh at people who didn't do things all in. But I don't really look at it like that anymore. You know, because like, uh, like sometimes if you, if you do something for a living, sometimes it can be so stressful that you will, you'll, that's why I think a lot of us go mad and insane or drink this and that because the stress is phenomenal. And I'm, I'm just wondering, I always look at both sides of the coin. Like, you know, I'm like, are you almost better with a day job and kind of play for fun? You know, I still, I don't have an answer for that question. Yeah, I, just, no, like, I, I, I don't mean to go off on a tangent. No, here, no, your tangent is well, is well spoken. I think, you know, there's an element of what could be said about me being like a Sunday writer, but the, but there's also... The, but I didn't mean that the, in any way no, about no, who I, you I, are I'm, as a creator. Well, I'm, I'm doing just, this as a, as a segue into what yeah, I want to say. Yeah. I'm not, I wasn't right, taking right. it that way. I'm just right. saying the 
you know, I've always, you know, my whole thing at the beginning was I wanted to do this for a living. And then all of a sudden I wasn't able to provide a living the way in which I wanted to live at that time. And then even in this situation, it's like uh, I lost my job. And so then I'm sitting in a scenario where I have, I had time and I had this album uh, right. as, and I just, and it was one of those things where I only had a shorter period of time. And but, so then I was, and I also have a family. So it's a whole kind of a tough dimension. So the whole thing is. None of this made any sense um, in, a, in a big picture, but like you say, you put your chips in a basket. I, I, I saw this album and I put my chips in the basket. And I said, you know what, I, I have, I, I've been a little rusty. I've been out of it a little bit. Yeah. I haven't done a lot of different things. I, ha I haven't gotten in, but at the end of the day, I've got an amazing amount of stuff that I want to share. I had to take a first step. Well, you know, another point is, though, I, like, I don't have a family. I only take care of my... It, it's so brutally hard to take care of just yourself, especially if you're, you're as nuts as I am, but... Just to take care of one person is, is hard. And, like, I don't think – I think if I had a family, I intentionally kept myself from getting in that situation because I knew I'd have to – I knew the compromise. It was kind of a, a choice. But, like, that's that's a whole other ball game when you have other people rely on you. And then, like, locking into some kind of long-term creative project, you know. And, and then you have the stress of money and thinking about what the next step – that's – but that also can be something that goes into the music or the art and makes it that that can be a creative drive in itself. Yeah, know? that's what, that's what I was just trying to say at the beginning of this. Like I, we've had these we've had these things that are alongside that have been creating that sort of uh, that tension and that energy. And it's I have that big time right now. And it's like the music business has changed immensely. It's even when I try to get into it back in the day, and it's even what I'm seem, seemingly feeling is harder to even make money and even harder to provide a living. But for me, it's like I can't turn off like you. You can't turn this off. Yeah. I can't turn it off. I can't. I still can yeah. go. I, well, you're going, I, you know, you can, but you go insane. Yeah. So, <laughs> that's you know, the then, you're you know, not, then you're not a happy person. It's uh, like, it's exactly. not. And then so, everybody around you suffers. Yeah. yeah. And I can't you, have that happen either. <laughs> you know, um, our, with the music industry, this is the crazy thing is that, like, I can't remember the last CD that I bought. Can't remember the last time. I, I recently bought a Soundgarden album because uh, it's what I run to. So that's, and that's been, it's before that, I mean, I bought it online for, a, for my phone, for running. But I can't remember before that, the last music I bought. And I'm thinking like, you know, back when we were kids, and it was, it was albums and it was uh, cassettes and CDs. And, and then like, um, but so much of music when I'm painting or whatever is I'll just pick, click on YouTube or something. And, you know, I just put myself in the shoes of a musician sometimes and I say, and, you know, I know some people in computers and I, I think I had this discussion with my brother because we had opposite views on it, is that uh, there are some people who think that everything should just be like open source free in a sense, right? Well, what about the creator? Where is the creator supposed to get paid? You know, uh, like, you know, remember that whole Napster thing that went on? That sort of started. It yeah. was like, you know, they were yep. basically the uh, and then, pirates, you know? Yeah, but here's the thing is, <laughs> I remember Metallica got up in arms about it. They didn't want their music to be shared for free, and everyone got mad at Metallica. And I took the opposite. I understood their point of view. You, you used to starve to be able to, in order to play your music, yeah. right? And then finally you hit big, but you still remember what it's like to, you know, not know where your next meal is coming from to, to, to work in that band. And then why should your music be free for people to share it? You you put the blood, sweat, and tears into making that music and creating it. So why should it just be? I don't. Um, I disagree with a lot of people on stuff like that. You know, the artist. If artists aren't going to get paid, I don't think they're ever going to stop creating. But it, artists should be paid for their music and their work. You know, and like it's a really hard uh, hard thing to try to monetize these uh, experiences. But if you think about all the great songs you listen to, even like you're saying, every single time you go out and listen to a Soundgarden song while you're running and you're trying to attain that six mile mark yeah, yeah. in a certain amount of time and you're being pushed by these guys, at the end of the day, like to me, there's something to be said by the experience that the musicians are providing. And in, on some levels, it almost like you almost need you almost need to have like a goodwill scenario where, you know, you you, you what? Make a donation to them or something. You, know you do did? something where you kind of, you know, or do something in their honor. I don't know. How do you want to do it? But. Well, this is what I did is I would run and I would just, there's a, on YouTube, I would have a full Soundgarden Bad Motor Figure. That's my favorite album yeah, to run great, to. The weirdest album. thing is I started running to it two weeks before Chris Cornell killed himself. But yeah. anyway, I mean, I used to run to it a long time ago. But then so I don't, just don't start listening to my album on a run. <laughs> 
So, so, so the thing was, but I would listen through YouTube, right? And I would get a, have a signal the whole time I was running and this and that. Let me, let me fix this. So anyways, um, I, I'm like, you know, I run to this every day. It helps me hit my marks running that album with so much energy. So then I just went and I bought the album, which I was running for, I'm like, you know, I should, even though I had owned probably three CD copies of it in my lifetime, but I went out and I bought it. I mean, I bought it online. And A, it sounds better. And B, it's really I'm good. like, I'm, I'm getting motivation out of this and I should give them some money instead of just listening to it. No, it's um, great that you do. I mean, that's the type of thing. That's what you got. I think that's the type of thing that needs to happen. It's, um, but it's more, it's the person who's receiving giving back too. Like, you know, as the artists, we're giving, right? Yeah. And, you know, we're hoping to receive something so that we can keep giving. Like, and so there's a relationship and, um, you know, it's, you know, there's business and that's a little bit of, you know, when, there's, when you start looking at numbers, uh, it's, it takes away a lot of that dimension of uh, sort of sh sharing, like, but we can't move without the help of the response that we receive from people who love what we do. And then vice versa. And then, you know, obviously you need the money to kind of to, to help support you as well. But that relationship is key. And that's what it was like for us when we were young. I mean, for me, I remember getting records. I'd come put a record on and listen to a whole record. I wrote Grand Design as a record. I didn't, like, yeah. I, I didn't, I wasn't writing it for a single. I wrote it as a record because I loved going and listening to records. I know that, you know, I hear a lot of musicians talking about that where they talk about like part of the art of the album was the arrangement of the songs, yep. first of all. And that was an art in itself, you know, and then the old album covers, which it was a whole package of art, artistry. And now a lot of people just buy like one song from now. You don't have that whole continuity. And, exactly. Um, well, like I said, my, the premise of this was album. I, yeah. I wrote an album. Uh, I put it together in a, as an album. I, I spent a lot of time placing the songs on the album, like you yep. said. And I did it old school that way. And everyone's like, oh, you don't need an album. You don't need this. You don't you just put a single out. I go... I have I have so much music, but I also I love albums. I love the experience of an album. I love the experience of the artist taking me on a journey and listening to an album through in its entirety. Well, you know what's funny if you take uh, Dark Side of the Moon, one of the great albums of all time. Take Dark. If you break that down and you just like buy a song, you'll have the last song running into. You know how the yeah. last song which runs into <laughs> the next song. So they never really got that right. If you just buy one song off that album, it'll have that a piece is one of, of the, that's a great and that's a, point. I'm sure they didn't plan that because no. they didn't know that music, you'd be able to buy individual songs, but I think it was brilliant. Like it almost forces you to have that album. It's an entirety. Uh, well, that's like, you know, it's like if all of a sudden we took a little snippet of him. I mean, we yeah. cut him out all of a sudden. We, and then you're sitting there looking at it. Well, it's like, oh yeah, that's interesting. But then when you take it in its entirety and you see the grandeur of it and you're like, holy cow, this is cool as hell. But again, you can't, that's and that's what's being lost a little bit. Of, yeah, you know, yeah. Like you can't. It's hard to look at a song in its entirety, but you look at it in an album in its entirety, and you have the experience of it in, in, in its entirety. There's something that it leaves you with, which I always was left with, man. That's why I asked, like a lot of great, like you say, Dark Side. I mean, there's great albums. Yeah. You sit there and you can listen to them to this day all the way through, and you wouldn't want to listen to one snippet of it. Well, you know, it's funny. I find me getting annoyed when I'm painting and I have something on YouTube, like a Peter Gabriel album, or something, and then a commercial comes on, and I get annoyed. I'm like, well. I'm listening to free music here, and that's the price you have to pay for not buying right. the album. Is it's got to be monetized? So, no, hopefully it's the artist getting the money. I don't know how that works. I actually do know how it works because I'll put um, sometimes I'm painting. I'll make a video of me painting, and I'll put like I'll have a song to it, like a Peter Gabriel song or something, and I'll get a warning from YouTube. Um, if you try to monetize, I think it's if you monetize it. Like, say I'm painting and I put a Peter Gabriel song and you monetize it, I think they'll flag it and shut it down. But if you don't monetize it, either that or all the revenue goes to the artist. In other words, they can tell automatically if you upload a song that's copyrighted. They, they, they can listen to it. Well, that's an but issue. I, that's a big yeah. issue right now. Like, I'm, just, I'm trying to figure that out myself. Like, I think even if you listen to, uh, say, if you're listening to uh, Pandora or Spotify and you're trying to listen to it for free. And, you know, I think there's a certain number of listens that the song needs to attain in order to get like a, a dollar. I mean, there's some crazy, yeah. like it could be a yeah. thousand. I, I don't know exactly what it is right now because I'm still, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm yeah. out on all these big sites, but I, I haven't re figured what out how What is the main it's one that people listen to? SoundCloud? Is that SoundCloud has been my best so far. It's been, uh, I had, 
I, I sort of made a mistake. That Reverb Nation was starting to pick it up. Uh, I was, Breezy was the song that they were yeah. taking, and they really loved it. It got a high rating on that. Really? It's, a, it's cool. It was a cool. Um, they were really into it, and they start and started pushing on the uh, charts. There, it got down to twenty. On and, Reverb Nation. Uh, on Reverb Nation, okay. and then um, uh, I. I, I I stepped away and, I, and it kind of went to 26. So now I'm kind of bringing it back to. Uh, so we got down there to that point. But I think, you know, I just needed to um, let people know what was happening to get some more support. But I, I actually feel like I dropped the ball at that point. But uh, yeah, in what sense? How do you drop the ball or carry it? I mean, uh, it's, it's just um, letting people know that there's movement. And, yeah, okay. and, and then letting people know that if people could help, if they want to listen to the song, if they can listen right, to it on, okay. that, on that site. That helps to push that song. Now, have to you a put new level. your album on? Um, and what is your uh, view on this? Is it on YouTube yet, or is it? It's on, on YouTube. Okay. Yep. It's all. It's just there on so as songs right now. So if you went and typed in right. Chris Bentley, okay. Grand Design on YouTube. What is your favorite song on the album personally? Do you have a favorite, or is that hard to say? <sighs> you know, it's. Uh, this is the question. Like, you know, do you have a favorite child? Like, yeah. you know, that's kind of the way I, I have these albums. You know, these songs right now in this album. That's like. I've been asked that, and I, I love them at different times uh, immensely. Like uh, sometimes when I was just driving, I love listening to the Grand Design, and that's been uh, that was my more most artistic. And if I had to put a B side on it, that would be like my B side right, on any one of the bigger songs that I thought I had. Uh, but I love there's dimension to that, and I just I can crank that thing up to as high as my radio will go. Now, uh, it, for the recording process, was did you do it in um? On the on the Mac mostly, or what? what we did what? it. We did it was Mac based. Uh, we, I did it at D City Studios in Huntington, and uh, they have they had a great setup and a great system there. So I, I, I didn't know, even know there was a studio. Yeah, no, there, I think somebody else. Well, I want to take you down there because I'd love I, to I, see it. Yeah, because yeah, that was that's something we can talk about uh, after this. Where but, in Huntington is that? I, uh, it's right uh, on one ten, not too just you know where um, that uh, Chinese restaurant is. There's like a laundromat. And there's Harbor Beverage. There's like it's it's right behind Harbor Beverage on really? uh, 110. Yeah, I think I was there once. I don't know. Um, so, but it's, it was a great place. I mean, I, and Don Chaffin is the one who helped me with the uh, mixing and everything. And you did all job. the instruments aside, except for the drums, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Did everything, and I did the uh, a lot of the vocals. Uh, I did all the vocals, or the, a lot of the backing vocals, and like I said, I had help with uh, uh, a beautiful female voice on the back. So it was kind of one of those things where. Um, Everything kind of just worked well, and like you say, when you know when you had, that was your question earlier about like the imp the impulse, and when you make it make a decision to make something happen, uh, I made a decision happen a lot because I was able to make a decision happen. These guys were great when I, I met yeah. them. I felt comfortable. I went in there and I hit it, and I just I stayed with it for it was a long time. I was going in for over a year, uh, probably you know probably almost thirteen months. I would say it's probably been well, that distance. You know what I find? I, I, I a friend, another friend of mine's a musician, and. Um, I've been in there while he's recording and watched them finish songs and stuff like that. And the thing I found most maddening is when you get to the stage of mixing, because he was working on an album, is when you get to the stage of mixing and just deciding what you want your final mix, it could be two different songs, essentially what you have in the can, you could completely make a different painting out of that rough painting. It could go almost any direction. And there's so many decisions, especially with a computer, gives you so many options and filters and stuff that in the old days you didn't have all those options. Um, it's like Photoshop. Anybody can, even a non-artist can take a picture today and kind of do almost anything to it. But back in the day you had to, it wasn't that easy. No, you were, you were cutting tape. You were yeah, taking three but with one button you can pick ten different sounds for something. Yeah. And I find that must be maddening to have all that tool, all those tools where it'd be so easy to get carried away with having so many options to take this echo or this and that. And, uh, well, you know, honestly, the, does that make any sense? Uh, totally. Like, uh, for me, I, I, I'm, I can get into that stuff very heavily. And I, uh, this, on this album, I had the discipline, thankfully, to just try to hang within a certain, within a certain sort of it's, experimental. It's almost, it's almost takes discipline to keep it stripped down to yeah. some degree and not get carried away with all the bells and whistles of technology, right? Honestly, but the other thing, a lot of it is budget. I mean, I had a budget. I mean, it's yeah. like you got to, you know. Oh, that's I, right. You're paying for I'm studio paying, time. I'm paying for it myself. You so. know what? I think that's almost good because you ever notice, I, I think it was, uh, yeah, it was Guns N' Roses where they, where they had this one album where they didn't come out with like decades. And... When you have all the time and the money in the world, I guess by then you they all own their own studios, I'm sure. You could noodle something forever. It's like if you don't create a deadline on a painting. I've had paintings around for 10 years because there was no reason to ever finish it. 
I try to force myself to get stuff mostly out of my hair and get it, if I started it, to get it finished and get it, because it's always kind of gnawing at the back of my head. Like, uh, I think it's, it's, it's like good to have that structure where you have to get something, all right, I've got to finish the song by this date. Otherwise, you can drag stuff on infinitely it is, right? it's yeah. tough and but you know like the hard part with music honestly uh and to your point like I, I had a budget so i had a line yeah. that i couldn't cross um but uh that said i mean i still listen to it and it's taken me a little long time to kind of separate from the process because i still hear things that i would do differently if i was still working on it you know yeah. it's like you know as the artist but at some point like right now i'm at that point where i just you just have to kind of let it go and yeah. let it and let it just you know you've had that with paintings too where you you know you can sit there and work on color and bring in certain dimension but for me it's the same thing where i just you have to let it go for where it is it right must now. be weird when you finally wrap up because paintings usually don't take as long as an album takes it must be weird when you finally wrap that baby off off and hand it off to somebody else and say it's, it's out of my hands now it's done you know it's <laughs> it's it's you know honestly i have had experience mostly just being with a dad but um yeah it's so you know you know how you hand your kid off and you send your kid off and that kind yeah. of situ- in this situation it was a very similar thing to me where i just yeah. you know i knew i had given everything i could to this and it's it, time for it to fly on its own you know you just basically say hey man this is you, you do your best you know it's hard too because when you put so much into one album like, if you make a painting that doesn't seem to work, which I've done in many, many of those, like, and people don't seem to react to it, and you don't get the ooh ah out of people, it kind of hurts things a little bit. You can tell, like, I was asked my, I can tell by the way my mom responds to stuff. She really likes it, or she doesn't. She always says that's nice, in it, but um, it, it, that's one thing. You'll just make another painting, but when you make a whole album, it must be nerve-wracking to hand it off to somebody especially somebody you're friends with or close to or whatever family member and like listen to this which takes all of an hour or so for something that you worked on for a year <laughs> you know so it's, that's got to be that's got to um, i don't we almost have to create a word for that like yeah. there's like you know even you know as an artist you have that moment where it's being received like in a three minute like one song is four minutes and all of a sudden yeah. you spent you know four months on that you know so it's like it's there's a rel- relative um, nature to it that's really insane. Like I don't know, the exponential is is way skewed towards you know our you know we're having a hard time you know with that with that effort. But to be, uh, be honest with you, like I I saw this this was easy in the sense that I know that I'm not done. Yeah. I, like I, I really am trying to figure out how to get the next one started. And like yeah, I'm, yeah. I have that next album ready that I, it's you, sitting on. I think that comes automatically. You'll just know. It'll hit you in the head. You know, I don't even think you have to beat yourself up over that. It'll come and hit you. Um, well, it's hit, it hit me. Or it hit me during this process. That was the big challenge. Like yeah. I, 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 during the process, another album formed, and I, it was I was really starting to kind of distract me a little bit. But I wanted to, you know, it's like having two or three paintings going at the same time. Yeah. I had like this other one that I just was like, I'm gonna, I need these guys to get together on their own and be uh, out and move. And that I just that was grand design. That's where that thing just. Yep. And so now it's, you know, working to try to get these uh, next, these, like you say, but I, I'm not worried about it, but I'm, I, you know what I'm saying? But at least in terms of the yeah. release, you know, I was okay with you, it because it's like, I, I want more, I want to give more. That's all I'm just well, trying to say. I find once you do something, you go through the process like you did, finish your whole album, blah, blah, blah. For some people never even get to that stage because I, I think there's a lot of fear factor artists have where they don't, like, I know artists since I graduated, I mean, art school dropout, but I know kids who were in my class in art school. They've probably made five paintings since, you know, I think I, think I dropped out like 93, you know, before the freaking the interwebs, really. Uh, I know people who haven't probably made five paintings since then. And um, that's something I can't understand, you know. And I think a lot of it, though, the people I know like that, a lot of them... There's a fear factor a lot of people have. And I find once you start putting your neck on the chopping block more and more, like just, you know, make one painting that fails, you make your next painting that's fail. You keep painting until you make less failures. Um, I think you get, you get better at, at, at producing and making stuff. And no, you don't have that fear. Oh, I'll go make another album. I just made one. But to make that first album... I mean, I know you made some with the Barley Boys, but it's your first own kind of real creation. They put your own. This is this is your own first stamp. fully independent. Yeah, I, I did an album in early, early 2000s. Yeah, but don't so you understand how much easier 
it's going to be, I don't necessarily mean the creative process of the writing itself, but all those hurdles and the fear factors and stuff like that, it'll be half gone. Half as hard as the first one. I, I you just go through it, so. and instead of all that anxiety, will people like it, blah, 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 you know, like, uh, it's, 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 I think it's very important for artists to get to that stage where you just, um, free. Just, just get in there and it's very freeing. Yeah. You know, the worst kind of thing you can have as an artist is, is I have, I know people, artists, friends of mine and stuff who say, well, I don't like to sell my art. Artists, painters, you know, I think that's the biggest bullshit I've ever heard. In my life. There's not an artist in the planet who doesn't like to sell paintings. When I sell a painting, I, it's sad to give up paintings sometimes, right? But it motivates the hell out of it because, I mean, somebody actually took... It astounds me that people actually would part with money to have a piece of art in their house, you know? That, to me, is a bizarre concept. But it motivates the living hell out of it. Somebody's actually willing to pay. Or, and I, I don't believe artists who say, I don't want to sell. Like, I think you're afraid to put your neck... Because there's a big rejection thing that goes along with putting your neck out there to sell or to make art or make music and stuff like that. you got to really risk being rejected. But without standing on that weird wobbly fence thing, which is where a lot of the creative energy comes from, um, you're never going to step forward and make stuff, you know? And that is the ultimate hell for me, is not being in the mix. Like, and just like rolling in... Because if I wasn't, I would roll on my head all day long like an insane person. I would go mad. I'm already half mad, but I would go full mad if... <laughs> if if I just sat there never created to say, well, what if I did it? What if, you know, what if, what if, you know? And, uh, well, that's the, that's the voice that said to me, that's no, no more, no more. Yeah. Just be, I'm in. So like, yeah, I'm but in. But you sleep so much freaking better if you stay in the mix, you know, it, it, for lack of a better term. Yeah, no, I, um, I, I wouldn't, I'm really, really thankful I was able to do this. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, uh, like you say, it, it definitely took a lot of, um, took a lot of work and it took a lot to try to manage everything around me to do it. But, uh, uh, I have to say I'm really thankful and I'm, I'm hopeful I can do it again. Like, you know, I don't know if I, you know, I don't know what life has in store for me. But at the well, end of the day, I, I, you know, this was what I wanted to, you, like, to your well, point. Well, look at the value of the process itself. I of going through that. Yeah. Not even just learning, but the actual of making that decision, making the effort, recording it all. But like, that whole, for the process itself, you know, they like the cliche that it's not a destination, it's a journey. Which is very true in a way. Like... That's like a magical process to go from an idea, like a, a doodle on a napkin, to all the sweat work, to the finished product. That's a wonderful journey as an artist. It's a wonderful process. And um, I think artists should always be in that mix, you know, because it's, 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 that's where you're alive. You're not alive when you're hiding from that shit. You're not. No, you know? Well, that's where, you know, I, I want this... This album gave me the strength um, to, to stand by it. Like my other albums, I, I don't think I was strong enough as a person at that time to be able to stand with them. Because, I mean, you know, when things are coming at certain times, yeah. it's just I wasn't re I almost wasn't even ready to handle it myself. So to me, it's like uh, this one, I, I felt like I was strong enough as a person to stand with them in, in this kind of uh, environment where it's very tough, very competitive, very yeah, like, yeah. I mean, like one listen, oh, I don't like it. I don't like, this is not good. This is, I don't like this voice. I, you know, all these things that have come flying at you in, in a matter of like three minutes. Well, you ever notice there's a million excuses not to do the, to not to do the album? There's a million reasons not to start a painting, not to do an album. And you know, there's something to be said for when time is right, when everything gels and therefore like, right. But I, I found also that, um, one way to get stuff to that place is by constantly moving forward and then things will start to gel and then you will create the environment for something to be right. It, it never seems to me that um, just waiting for everything to be perfect to go out yeah, and create no. something. Like you have to create that environment through just banging your head against the wall enough times so eventually a brick falls out and you can see through 100%. it. Like, uh, you know, I, I think Picasso said, work inspires inspiration. Like, you never just sit there and all of a sudden, well, that does happen sometimes. Yeah. You get stupid ideas. <laughs> but usually, like, when I recently did that, that pug thing, which kind of got, you know, got a lot of press, I was making this paper mache just because I wanted to screw around with paper mache. And I'm like, I, I'm like, why are you going to go buy paper mache? You're almost 50 years old. You're going to go buy paper mache. <laughs> and while I'm working in paper mache, no idea what I'm going to do with it, I had this really good idea and they went around the world but the thing was if i didn't have my hands covered in 
all that. Oh, and my, material I, did, I was too lazy, of course, to change my good clothes. So then I ruined them all with paper mache. <laughs> and I'm like, what am I doing? I'm in a room covered in paper mache and plaster of Paris. But therefore, when I'm working, I had a really good idea while my hands were dirty. And it's when your hands are dirty that you get inspired inspiration. You don't get it by sitting there waiting for somebody to come tap you on the head like, you know, uh, some no, magic fairy. You're totally right. I mean, like this book I have here has got all the stuff that I did for, uh, you know, trying to put the album together. And I, yeah. I kind of, all this, like all, all scratch copies of everything. And um, it's my way of getting my hands dirty. Like it's, uh, I always, you know, having the guitar, but it's like you say, I could sit there and, and sort of want to have another album, but unless I get into, yeah. the, into the trench, and start working on making it happen. It's not going to happen. So, and that's what happened with the Grand Design album. It was like, uh, it just, and to your initial statement, it was like all about getting to that point of uh, uh, going and saying yes to the record, saying yes to yep. the production of it, saying yes. My biggest hurdle in this was I wasn't a guitar player before this album. And, yep. I, and I, I basically learned how to play guitar. Well, think about that. Is there any better reason not to make an album because you don't know, you're not a guitar player? Like, yeah. that would be one on one to say why I can't do this, yeah. right? Um, or it's like, what was his name? Django Rein Reinhardt, right? Yeah. Was missing fingers and became one of the greatest guitarists of all time. Like, it would be real easy to say, well, I can't play guitar because I'm missing some digits. You know, it's, it's like, if you look at some of the hurdles people overcome to, to make things happen in life, it, it, really, it, it makes you realize that your bullshit excuse is not to do something are just bullshit excuses. No, you, know? you you create you create excuses in order to stand by your belief that something should not happen. Does that make any sense in a way? Like like you'll come up with a million ideas why this should not exist, as opposed to really doing something that you know deep down that you should do. But like you'll come up with excuses to make yourself right and why I didn't get it done. Well, that's the thing. I, like, I, I ended up taking lessons and I really worked my ass off and practiced hard. But it was like it was my version of what the paper mache was. Like, yep. you know, had I not gotten like had I not asked my friend Rick to play the drums and he said yes instantly, yep. which was a freaking gift. So he and I went in and laid them all out. I actually started out with twelve tunes. I cut it back to ten. So he, you know, I had 12 song, I had 12 drum parts to go into, uh, to do this whole thing, and I had nothing else really at that point. Yeah. I, I had, and even to this day, if you ask Rick, you know, if he came in and did an interview, he'd be like, you know, what I gave him and what he did and then what I did, it was like there was never yeah. any sort of way in which you would tell that that was going to happen, but by hands in the paper mache in order to make the, yeah. make the start, make the, make the inspiration well, arrive to you, really. For well, me. The, the thing is, I find once you make a hard decision and set a, even, especially if you set a date, a, a firm decision, not a La La Land decision. All right, I'm going to do an album. I'm going to do a bunch of paintings, do an art show. The minute you do that, things start to open up that weren't doors that would never have opened. Like you'll find the person you need to play the drums. You'll find the person you need who will take the work for an art show. But those things do not open until you make the firm commitment. It's almost like the universe kind of works with you. And I think people who don't live into that will never truly understand. It's so true, though. Like, because I've had, like, uh, things that I've just noodled on for forever and ever and never finished. But then all of a sudden I have to have, you know, I make a commitment to have an art show. And all those straggling things uh, get handled. They get put away, put to bed. And next thing you know, you've got somebody who says, all right. I'll take a look at work and have a knowledge. But if you're just living in this non-commitment commitment land uh, artistically where everything's just, you know, kind of free form, that's not, I don't think that's where true creative creativity comes from. There's a place for that. But I think true creativity, creativity comes out of when you make a commitment to something, you set some firm deadlines, um, you say, all right, this is going to get done for better or for worse. And then that's when things start to happen and it's just weird how it can all happen in a year and for the prior 10 years nothing happened yeah no, no i don't know if i explained that well but. no 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 you're, you're totally right but the other th the other thing that i've really learned after even going through this and, and and working with inspiration like you're saying um is that everyone has inspiration in everything that they're doing i, I see it now yeah. with everybody like i don't care if it's a mother with their child or whatever you know all these different things everyone is living a life of inspiration yes. and it's yeah. kind of very fascinating like 
we're tapping into it in a, at, a, at a level that's a little bit different, but it's, yet, yet it's, there's, the essence of it is identical. Like we're, we're just, you know, we're coming at it from a whole different perspective. And honestly, like our, our talents, what we have are kind of unique. Like, whereas like the mother who's home with the baby now may have been like a great lawyer or she may have been yeah. like, you know, there may have been other areas in which the inspiration was kind of like really bringing her, her to life, you know, and for us to come to life, it's through our, like this. I, I mean, I, I wouldn't change this for a second. Like, you know, and that, that brings me to life. And I'm hoping to help, you know, inspire others. Well, you know what I also believe, in, I, I don't know if this is the long lines, which is that, like, I know people who can't draw a stick figure. I know people who can't um, play a lick of music. But I, know, I have a buddy of mine who's like that. But I sincerely believe that he is an artist. As, like just creative, as creative as anybody I've ever met, but doesn't know how to necessarily to express it. I don't know if that's good or bad. It would probably be maddening to have that in you and not be able to really put it out in a certain way. But I think there's uh, people, you know, business, Wall Street people who are artists in their own, the way they approach things are an intuitive level. Lawyers, you know, it's, I, I, think, I think some of the best businessmen in this world um, approach things more from a gut, intuitive level than doing all the numbers and crunching the numbers and then making a decision based off that. You know, I well, think that's, uh, that's all about everything's vision, creative. Vision, like you know, and, and again, it's like these guys didn't know. You know, you can't say like Bill Gates knew what the hell he was doing until he got into yep. until, until he had the, all the wiring. All <laughs> you know, what I'm saying like yeah. his hands are dirty in that space. We're sitting there like we're using all these things that they're, we're benefiting from all of his like his vision. You know. And so it's, it, there's there's dimensions to it that are very identical to what we're doing, and it's like even having this radio or this uh, video, whatever we're doing, it's like it's a step, uh, which I think is like I said, it's fantastic that this is happening, and I think you know this is all your vision, and you know it, it starts in a garage, like it yeah. starts yep. it starts at a place. So we you know you and I don't know where this is going to go. We don't know what this is going to do for ten years from now or mm. whatever, and. But we, you know, we're in our garage right now, sitting there tinkering with what you know we're trying to d figure out with art and and life. You know, trying to get right. get to uh, to be able to just keep keep it going. Now, um, all right. So let's let's make sure I have all the information out there for your album. The album is Grand Design, Chris Bentley. And if somebody wants to purchase it, what is the best way to? Is it through SoundCloud? Is it? Uh, well, SoundCloud is the free site. Um, I would right. say okay. the um, the best way to, to to get it is through iTunes, Amazon, uh, CD Baby. Those are the main guys that are driving it. Um, you know, those are the most accessible. It's on Spotify. Uh, I haven't had a chance to see if it's on like any of the other free sites like Pandora and that kind of stuff. But uh, SoundCloud's been very well received. Um, it's been on Reverb Nation. Um, you know, my album's up on that. And so it's, it's, I say the best way to buy it is just uh, through the main channels. And it's Chris Bentley, B E N T L E Y, not yes. the rapper Chris Bentley. There's a rapper, There's a rapper out there. Uh, he and I are kind of <laughs> vying for space. Uh, it, was, it was a tough decision, and I don't mean to infringe on him at all, but uh, it's one of those things where uh, I'm, I've actually thought about doing a rap tune at some point. So uh, my, my, son's, my son's heavily into rap, so I thought maybe I might, might just, you know, there's, there's no limit to what, what's possible. So we'll see. Maybe, uh, maybe he and I will do something together at some point. So. But anyway, yeah, no, I appreciate it. I have a website, chrisbentley.com. Uh, it's just, you know, it's got photos and stuff. Uh, and you know it's got like lyrics and things like that, and uh, some T-shirts if you want to buy them. And CD is also available on that. And uh, I'm gonna start I'll start playing out. So um, I'll, I'll look forward to uh, you know just keep keep track of it. To keep, you know for dates and where I'm gonna be going and what I'm gonna be doing. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys out there. Um, and when when I edit this, I'll close out with some uh, one of your tunes. I have to I want to show this to the people watching this thing. Here, where is it? Have you seen, there's a concert that was going on in um, England. And it was a Green Day concert, okay? I saw that. With Queen song? Yeah, have you seen that? Yeah, oh, Isn't it one of the there. most brilliant? It was great. I'm not going to Google on here. I'll just, there's a concert in England. And Green Day was way late in coming out. Was it like an hour or two hours yeah, or something? Was, like? I don't know the exact time. But was... So the entire huge crowd started singing... Um, Bohemian Rhapsody. Bohemian Rhapsody. Mm -hmm. I think they were playing the music just it's, to keep I think it was, yeah, they were, they were doing that. Over the speakers. But the, the, the vocals that you hear is the entire, I don't know how many people, like 30, 40,000 people. Yeah, I think they said 65. 65. <laughs> Everybody in the entire stadium singing. 
It's absolutely. I found it very motivating and touching. It was really cool. I uh, I saw it too, and I was really fired up. And it's just one of those things where even for like myself, you know, just the, the thought of maybe being appreciated like that at some point. Um, well, leaving that much mark where you're in somebody's head. That's what's weird about art is like you're well, sticking something in somebody's head. <laughs> but I'm know? saying like that song is like. I mean that's in our blood, man. We've been yeah, we've but the funny thing is, you how even many times know you heard that song. Yeah, but you even know the next word that they're all going to sing in the whole stadium of sixty-five thousand. That's where art is weird. You're sticking that little thing in somebody's head, and they have it in there. The whole crowd had that song, and it wasn't even the band they were going to see. But I think it was Green Day, right? Was it a Green Day show? And they were then they did. Was the, there a recent show? I think it was July or something. It was, it was in. I don't. I, I didn't, I sort of, I, I just totally listened to the, to them saying I didn't get into, I just saw the other day. I didn't, I get, I didn't get into all the, uh, the, I know, the details brother. of it. But, but I was anyways, like, look that up. Yeah. So, Chris. Al, thanks so much. Nice talking to you. And um, this is Art with Alex. Chris Bentley, check out his album. And, um, yep, that's it. Okay. Thank you.